Hello and welcome. Hope you've had a great week. Sit back, relax off the bench. Proudly brought to you by GRV. Make sure you get your tab bets on for tomorrow night's Group 1 Maturity Classic featuring Speedster, brother and sister, Rip and Hayne and Rip and Rose have a massive show coming up tonight. Pickers uh, joins me again. Ros Lanigan will join us a little bit later on. We have another great feature story. We have the GRV Club Challenge. We didn't go uh, any good last week, Pickers, uh, <laughs> by the way. And, of course, Country Racing Victoria Wheel. Pickers, welcome to you, the 97 BNF with the Cats. Uh, well, good to be here, Swanner. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you what, it's been a cold week again, unfortunately, oh. but uh, the weather's starting to turn, yep. I believe, and final's not far away. That's yep. a big thing. Hey, just quickly, before we introduce our special guest, uh, significant milestone games this weekend. Boomer Harvey, 427. Uh, Matthew Pavlich... 350, but for the Cats, a, a, a club yeah. that you play footy with, Jimmy Bartel notches up 300, and Boris Enright notches up the game's record hold, 326 games. Yeah, great, uh, great for both players, really. I mean, Jimmy's been a. I wish he'd get rid of the beard, but I know he's doing it mm, for a reason. Mm. But uh, what a player! And I played with Corey Enright. That's how long he's been around. And yep. my last year was 2000, so he's been in the system a long time. And well deserved to be the record holder there. Yeah, right, well so. spoken and well done to all of those four players uh, notching up great milestones and well done to Sam Mitchell last week. Hey, I reckon you also played a bit of footy against uh, Andrew Dunkley back in My the My word, days. and you would have played with him. I did and uh, made a career out of getting pretty easy kicks uh, with Andrew <laughs> who was told by Rodney E, do not kick the ball under any circumstances. Sandow, uh, good evening to uh, Dunks who will be watching the <laughs> show. Really very will. fine football player and would beat the living suitcases out of me. But he'd be also very excited, Pickers, to be watching the... Uh, Development and growth and maturity of his young son, Josh, who joins us tonight, a Western Bulldogs player. Welcome, Josh. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Warner. Big is. Thanks for having me. Hey, uh, your dad, uh, what advice has he given you with regards to your career, given the fact that he had a great career with the Sydney Swans? Yeah, I think the main thing dad's really given me advice for is probably just to enjoy my footy. Um, yeah, go out there and have fun and don't, don't be too soaking up in the atmosphere. Just go out there and play footy. He was a good player, your dad. Uh, a different player, obviously. He was uh, a team of the century member for the Swans, but also uh, a very hard, mm. strong key position player. You're probably as tall as your old man, but playing more of an on-ball role. Yeah, I think dad's a 191 centimetre tall player, and he was a full back, and I'm 190 and a midfielder. So, yeah, it's, it's a different game these days, and I think I'm going all right to date. Yeah, you are. You're going very well. Uh, growing up in country Victoria, in Sale, and... Uh, your memories of growing up in the bush? I mean, obviously up there it gets a bit cold in Gippsland and <laughs> yeah. a little bit wet too. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, yeah, I think when we first came back, my first uh, footy was with the Yarram Allies. We had a merged team up there and I was under 14s and under 12s. And Dad coached that, so it was good to uh, be a part of it. And then I moved on to Sale and played um, senior footy there, which was good. Matt Ferguson was the coach and he really... Uh, provided me with a lot of insight to like a game plan and I think learning that at such a young age has really put me in good in good stead for AFL footy. Well you're seeing you're here playing for this is Gippsland Power yep. and you also played in a, you played a senior uh, flag at, I think three or four years ago up in Sale didn't you? Yeah so I was 15 at the time and um, Matt Ferguson was a coach as I said before but it was amazing to, he gave me one role and that was to play on a wing and he taught me everything about it, where I was in the zone, what I'd do on our ball movement and yeah, I just played that role and ended up playing in the Premiership, which was pretty special. Well, they're hard to win at AFL level, Swan, we they know that. Uh, but it's so good to get one away early. Not a bad on a roll, early days mm. in his career, but he's achieved a bit so far, Josh. He has achieved a bit and also, well, we haven't put on there, but uh, you did the Gatorade ad with Gary Ablett, I remember doing that before you were drafted, you must have enjoyed that. Yeah, I did, I did that with Gary and um, Scott Penderbury as well, so... I was pretty pumped to be going up in, into the Gold Coast and doing filming a Gatorade commercial, that's for sure. Hey, uh, you spent some time training with the Swans, giving the connection with uh, your dad there, but you ended up being drafted by the Bulldogs. What was it like when you got the phone call to say, we've uh, made our selection, you're coming to the kennel? <laughs> yeah, um, I, was, I was pretty excited just to be on an AFL list um, and to, be, to know that, yeah, in a couple of days you were going into an AFL club for the first time and that was your club, I think it's a pretty special moment and... Yeah, I haven't really looked back from there. I've sort of taken step by step and try to be as that, that sponge, I guess, that you, that you have to be. You've, uh, you've landed at a good club and you've looked, landed with a good coach by the looks of it. Luke Beveridge, you must be thrilled with what he's been able to do to develop you so far in your career. Yeah, Bevo's really good. I remember the first time I met him, uh, he came out to my house in, in Kew and, um, yeah, it was a very special moment. Family were there and he was really good to me at that time. And then since I've been at the club, yeah, even better. So it's amazing what he's done for the footy club and how we're going now. Now, when I uh, think about uh, football players having dogs as pets, I think of your <laughs> old man, I think of a uh, Ridgeback or a Rottweiler or a really big, <laughs> aggressive dog. What have you got, a Cavoodle? 
Yeah, my sister and I have got a little cavoodle. Um, his Come name's, on. name's Archie. Yeah. Beautiful dog. This is one of your boys, straightening up picks. He needs a big muscly <laughs> dog. with a cavoodle. Is it? Yeah, you can see he is. Okay. He's very playful and he's pretty cute. When am, I, am I right in saying this little cavoodle's got his own Instagram account? Yeah, my sister's actually set it up for him, so... Um, I've got a bit of access to it and I'll, I'll cop a bit of stick from the boys at the club, that's for sure. <laughs> I bet you do. And you, you mentioned your sister, she's a very good netballer and you've got a younger brother Kyle coming through the under-16 system, we played yep. in, the, in the carnival not long ago, but I want to ask you about your sister, is there, at some stage is she going to be able to learn to cook because you do everything at home, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, I do, I, I get into her a bit, but um, no, nah, she's, she's picked up her slack a bit lately, um, cooked me dinner on, I think it was Monday night, and then yeah, she's gone back to Gippsland, so... I'm batching my, by myself, which I don't mind because I'm still cool. <laughs> it's a good skill to have because uh, a lot of footballers have no idea when it comes to the kitchen. Hey, um, you've got some challenges ahead, uh, your injuries and those type of things, but you know, you've know you actually shown as a footy club, given the injuries from last weekend, but also the injuries earlier this year to Jason Johannesson and also Bob Murphy, that you've got a, a, a fair level of depth that you can cover some of those losses. Yeah, I think we do. We've got um, a lot of players in the VFL that are probably ready to play AFL. It's just hard to getting the AFL side at the moment, which with such an um, even spread list, I reckon. Um, so, yeah, we've been, we've been doing so like pretty well so far and hopefully we can continue that. We're well, in, stay in. That's the key because it looks like the dogs are on their way to finals. So hopefully, for your sake, Josh, that you stay in the team and you can play finals footy in your first year. It'd be brilliant. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Um, just to run out every week is special for me and I'm just taking it step by step so hopefully I can continue that. Well we had Jason Davenport on last week, Pickers has managed him for 15 <laughs> years, I hope that you see him more than twice in that what. period, uh, you're doing That's a fine ridiculous. job and uh, it's exciting to uh, see a young man uh, making his own way through AFL footy given the great career that your dad had with the Sydney Swans, so well done um, and uh, we don't uh, let you go home empty handed Josh and I think we've got this right, we've now we got have, the players we... that can wear this gear Pickers. Well we ha we've, we've had a go at some of the bigger lads. Monkey. Uh, Darren Flanagan. Yep, Mark uh, Evans. The last two weeks we've had <laughs> yeah. Davenport, Jace yeah. Davenport, yeah. and now Dunks. And it's a, it's a young man's label, it let's is. be honest. It's St. Goliath clothing. We're going to give you a $100 voucher. You can wear that with pride. It's available at Maya and Edge Clothing. Well done, Josh. Uh, congratulations. All the best for the rest of the year. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Ros Lanigan, Country Footy's first lady, will join us with a wrap of footy here in Victoria. Welcome back to Off The Bench, proudly brought to you by GRV. Make sure you get your tab bets on for tomorrow night's Group 1 Maturity Classic. Got a big show still to come. Time now to head around the state. As we introduce Country Footy's first lady, Ros Lanigan. Welcome to you, Ros. Great to have you on board again. Great to be here once again. And what a weekend it was. Pr plenty of uh, wet weather footy right around the state. And we'll start off in the Golden Valley Football League where Tatura drew with Benalla. It was a real slugfest here at Tatura, resulting in the first draw of the Golden Valley League senior season and the second draw of the day, because they also drew in the reserves, because oh, unbelievable. Pretty remarkable result for Tatura, who went into the game in 10th spot against the reigning premiers in Benalla, who are third. Very low scoring game, as I said, no goals kicked by either side in the first quarter and only m one major kicked in the third quarter well, as well. But looking at the ground, the ground's in great condition, ground's, must have been windy, wasn't it? ground's in great condition, yeah, but it'd be wet underfoot, yeah. they'd be heavy anyway. And here we look at the ladder, Tatura slipped from 10th to 11th on the table after the draw, while the Saints remain in third with four rounds to play until finals in the GV. Kai Abram, the clubhouse leader, as you can see this season after losing the grand final to the Saints last year. The Bombers, of course, undefeated and have a pretty healthy percentage, yeah. as you can see there, to top it off. Their average winning margin is out to about 11 goals this oh, year. Now, this is There's more There's a like picker special footy. there. He's a wet tracker. <laughs> Kai Abram and District Footy League, another low-scoring match as third-placed Stanhope hosted fourth-placed Violet Town. Five goals for the entire game was enough to get the Lions over the line by eight points. Now, the Lions actually kicked three of their five goals in the second quarter, so it was pretty slim pickings for goals oh, through the rest of the ever. day. Not a lot of run on that ball there. <laughs> <laughs> it's got home in the end, though. <laughs> now, it's a 20-round season in the Kyabram District Footy League, so there's still a bit of water to go into the bridge before finals here. Nagambi and Avenal, the two top sides, will actually play in the last home and away round, so that will decide the minor premiership and perhaps even be a grand final preview as well, boys. Now, they play final six in this league, so if you have a look, Tallygaroop, Lancaster and Gagari and even Murchison are... Um, 
in the mix in to get that mix, sixth yeah. spot. So it's really tight there. And the reigning Premier, Merrigan, sitting fifth and still thereabouts as well. Poor old Ardmona, not having the best not season. Not having a great right season, no. the, uh, the pairs. And in the Pukola and District Football League South East Division, uh, it was three versus four. Tungama made it look pretty easy in the end, winning by 45 points over Katunga. The Bears were out to a four-goal lead at the first change, and that blew out to eight goals by three-quarter time. Ash Saunders was a standout. He kicked five for Tungama. Oh. In this league, there'd be three rounds left to play before finals, and both Tungama and Katunga will meet the latter leader, Shepherd and East, on the run home. So they've both got, yeah, both got tough runs home. <laughs> Shep East is flying, as yeah. you can see, still unbeaten after bowing out in the prelim last year. Swatter, who, uh, no, the second team there, Wayo. Who comes from Wayo? Anthony Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, oh, that's his one. <laughs> and Wayo were runners up last year, and they'll, they'll be right up there come September this year in the Pocola and District. North West Division, Pocola United, clearly the team to beat here. They're four games ahead of the reigning Premier Strathmerton and also Berrigan. And with only two games until finals, they've got the minor premiership stitched up. They've also got the bye tomorrow, so they'll have a freshen up oh, coming into finals. There's not too that. much not too much can go wrong for Bacola United from this point on. No, they look like they're in reasonable shape. But the conditions overall last oh, week. Yeah. Cold I was in, I was lucky I was I was in Sydney doing radio on the yep. weekend, so I was for Swans and Carlton. Hmm. But even watching the Cats game Friday night, it was just like, wow. Well, as we say, footy is a winter sport, oh. but sometimes Mother Nature probably pushes it just that little bit too far, and that did happen on the weekend. As we take a look at oh. some vision. Oh, my God. That is From, a, that oh is a Liam Pickering 30 possession <laughs> venue right there. The Allen Bacon <laughs> District Football League on Saturday. <laughs> Bullen Bullen, 1-6-12, defeated Kui Rup, 1-3-9 at Bullen Bullen. There is not a blade of grass I left on that over. I tell you... The last time I've seen no. a ground in that state for so long. The worst no. thing is after play on it again in a fortnight. Like, oh, no, it'll be all right by then. Imagine it'll cricket season. There'll be balls flying everywhere no, after those good, divots. Good, good oh. As we have a look at some other fo uh, photos from around the state, it was very wet in the North Gippsland League where two games were actually called oh. off oh. in the fourth quarter. At Yarram, the clash between the Demons and Trelgan Ties United was called off um, because there were several players suffering hypothermia really? and had to come off the ground, what, so they called it off in the last quarter. What sort of um, temperature are we talking? It was minus 4.2. Felt like minus 4.2. This is at Yarram there. Yep. Um, minus 4.2 oh, no. at the airport, which is just down the road. That's, no. where, that's no. where Dunks lives. No. <laughs> so many things wrong with minus 4 yeah, and, and couple, short sleeves. A couple of other um, scores from around the state. Alvi 3-5, 25 defeated. Z Simpson 0-10. 10 Jeez. and there was similar ones all around the state like five or six goals got your win on the weekend which is very good mm. what was the worst conditions you ever played footy in the, the women leagues was never that bad growing up i must say um i think probably 89 so i don't know if mm. you remember that i can't remember yesterday no you've got a bad memory but 89 the afl season remember that famous victoria south australia yes. game where the mcg was just mud and tony hall did his mm -hmm. knee tackled by andy, andy collins, collins teammate. well i remember we couldn't train at arden street because yep. the ground was that bad that year so I reckon that year was probably as mm. bad as I remember, but mm. uh, country footy, the, the Wimmera grounds are actually pretty good. I have to admit, we weren't too bad up there. I tell you what, I picked a good game to go to last Saturday. That was in Hopeton up in the Mallee, and it was sunny there. I didn't even have a coat on, so I really did do pretty well, picked the right spot to go on a weekend like that. All right, let's hope that the weather this weekend is more favourable for some games of footy and netball. Uh, what about some GRV news, please, Ros? Yes, as you mentioned earlier, huge night for racing tomorrow night at the Meadows as the Group 1 Hudson Pacific Maturity Classic Final will be held. $145,000 prize pool. Now, there's less than three lengths separated three of the four semi-final winners over the 525 metre journey, so expect a close one. Robbie Britton, a trainer at Lara, goes into the race with litter mates Rippin Rose and Rippin Hain. And Rippin Hain set the time standard in the heats on the weekend, running at 29.81. Really good effort there. Rippin Hain from box eight in the pink. Right next to Rippin Rose, he'll come in the black rug in, from box seven. So watch those two dogs on, on it should tomorrow be a, night. It should be a Rippin night, <laughs> I would have thought. Yeah. And nicely done. Hey, thanks very much, Roz. Uh, appreciate you joining us again tonight. We're going to take a break. When we come back, another fantastic feature story. And then uh, Pickers and I are going head-to-head -head again, again with the GRV Challenge. Neither of our dogs got up last week. So Good. I might just pay a little bit of a drive-by to our tipster who needs to lift his game <laughs> when we come back. Feature story We're not tipping them ourselves. Challenge. Yes, <laughs> meaning both of us. Right, move on. Break. We'll come back with more after this. <laughs>
Welcome back to the show brought to you by GRV. Make sure you get your tab bets on for tomorrow night's Group 1 Maturity Classic GRV Challenge between Pickers and I with our tips coming up very shortly, but another edition of a feature story. This one involving the Southern Mallee Giants. It's an amalgamation between once fierce rivals, and that is the Hopeton Football Club and the Bueller Football Club. Let's take a look at how these two teams came together to form one club. <laughs> There was always a fierce rivalry. There was no high school in Beulah, so we used to come to school at Hopeton, and when we played Hopeton, there was always it was on for uh, bragging rights on on the Monday or for the you know, till we played them again. Nobody hated them more than me. Certainly in 1974, Beulah beat Hopeton that particular year, and uh, we were only a young side at that stage, and we were knocked around heavily with the Beulah coach. We had the opportunity back in '75 to play them again in the grand final and he was the same coach. I and mean, all us young guys said, rightio, every time he goes near the ball, just push his head in the ground, you know, make him earn his kicks. And at the end of the day, we won the grand final. Jack's shaking hands with everyone, everyone's patting him on the back, but yeah, Rainy M Mulligan made her way through the, through, the, through the crowd and found him with her umbrella. And yeah, she didn't like uh, how she treated her husband Bruce uh, during the game, so, but Bruce was a hard nut. He would have given out as much as he gave. Ward off a duck's back, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I, I don't think I was an angel either when I was playing. It was always drummed into us as kids that you, you got to hate hopes, and it doesn't matter if your best mates at school or when you play on Saturdays, you've got to make sure you win. Things are measured by premierships, that's just a magic, the matter of how it goes, but I mean, both clubs have been starved in recent years of, of success. When the committees were getting together to discuss the amalg amalgamation, they were going, oh, do we call it Bueller Hopeton, and Hopeton and Bueller, do we call it this, that, are we blue, because Bueller was blue or, or red for Hopeton. We discussed it for a couple of years, uh, and then when I heard about it, I said, well, look, why don't you get on board with the Giants and use their jumpers. Like, they would love to get their jumpers out there. And, uh, and I said, if you want to do it, I'll get in touch. So I got in touch with Kevin Sheedy. Kevin come up to Hopeton here and uh, launched us last year. Little kids in, in, in prams getting around with little Giants jumpers on. It's fantastic. And they see it on the TV and they think that's part of our club. Since then, we haven't looked back. We went, went together as strong clubs and it's really, really turned out for the best. We couldn't have asked for a, for a better setup than we've got now. 2015, the Mallee, obviously, uh, league, and uh, they went back to five clubs. And this year, you know, with the AFL Victoria wish to go into the Horsham District Football League, nobody's whinged about it. They've just in, taken it on board and say, look, this is what we've got to do to make it happen, and it's happening. It's really good to see that they've actually gone ahead in loops and bounds, and they are a strong side. So often when you have an amalgamation that the, um, the two sides are both fairly weak teams and they join up but they don't get much stronger for the first 12 months, two years. But in this one, um, they've jumped on board and become a very strong side. In fact, they're leading the seniors at the moment on top of the ladder and their netball is going fairly well as well, you see. So the amalgamation here, absolutely fantastic for these two clubs. Your footy family is your family. As you know, when the tough things happen, you know, everyone sticks together and that's what it's all about. So it's been great. People once again, you know, wanting to get on board. I think if you've got a strong brand, people will want to play with you. And we're hoping to keep that momentum up because, you know, we, we like the Giants and uh, we love being Giants and we just want to keep it going. I'd love to get a, a flag with the Giants, especially this year. We've got a great opportunity. We've got the easy job playing football. We just turn up on Saturday and play. So the least we can do is win a few games of footy and hopefully the one at the end of the year be good. Yeah, happy days now. Two teams coming together who were once bitter rivals and uh, rich history picks. How do yeah. you reckon uh, Stall and Ararat would have gone back in its day? No. No? <laughs> I couldn't see that working. Yeah, not well. Uh, well, two towns differently, but mm. I mean, it's it's easy for me because Stall and Ararat are about 25, 30 k's away. Yep. How would you go? You were a Warnable boy. No, you... South Warnable. South Warnable and South Warnable. Warnable. No, but you're a Warnable boy. Yeah. You were South Warnable. Yep. If they merged South Warnable and Warnable, how would you roll with that? No, I would have left. Wouldn't have happened. South Warnable, working class Warnable, they're just the rich. They the just rich. bought everything. <laughs> Boy, they just the bought everything. They had all the money. Had the big fancy club. That's it. Just wouldn't have happened. Really? Uh, you know what's back on, don't you? Thank God. We need to redeem ourselves because last, last week, week, second and Shocking. third, no good. Mm. Uh, who are we playing for, Picks? Uh, Russell's Creek That was last, last week. week. We're yep. playing for Myrtle for That's a correct. fine this week. Thousand bucks in there, Kitty, irrespective of what happens on the racetrack. Yeah, so Myrtleford Football Netball Club, they're going to get a thousand. Yep. But
But we've got 500 each from our tipster, Righto. Master Gun, and yep. if he doesn't get his act together, he's going to be called Spud Gun. <laughs> yes. But the Master Gun's given you a tip and yep. me a tip. You've I'm, got the big ticket. I'm which going is with the big you. show, the big ticket. Uh, box number three, a big drop in class, this one, 23 of 49. The only dog in this race picks that's run sub 27 seconds. I understand that. Right. But the Mojito Mayhem. Who? Mojito Mayhem that I'm rolling with mm. is a flying machine. He's going to get out of, of gate eight, yep. never miss the place in gate eight, yep. and go whoosh, straight past you, Swatter. All right, so we've got 500 bucks yep. on the nose of our respective dogs. My word, we have, and that goes to Myrtleford if yep. we can get ourselves a winner. We've already got a grand in their kitty, so good luck. That's race eight, uh, race eight on the weekend. We'll be back with the final wrap of the show after the break in 2016. Off the bench is proudly brought to you by GRV. Get your tab bets on for tomorrow night's Group 1 Maturity Classic. When we come back, the William Hill odds, a few tips from picks, and we are done. It's our favourite part of the show, the Celebrate at the Country Races Wheel, with lots of goodies to be won each and every week. And the major prize, a $2,500 marquee package at the Kilmore Cup later this year, and that'll be drawn on our Grand Final Eve show. But we need contestants in order to spin the wheel each and every week, so get your entry in and all the information about celebrating at the Country Races at countryracing.com.au. Yes, and this week's lucky contestant is Paula Simpson from Lake Wendere. Good luck to you. I'm Come on, give a big spin. Chance. A real chance, Swatter. Yep, close, but chance. no cigar. CRV picnic pack, cooler bag, picnic rope, stubby holders, the whole lot. Well done, Paula. Got to jump into the odds for William Hill online racing and sports betting. William Hill faster, easier betting picks. Yeah, big round of footy. Looking forward to this one, that's for sure. And uh, as we get the odds up, I think Hawthorne way too strong for Carlton. Yep. Who are going all right, by the way. Uh, Collingwood will give a bit of cheek to West Coast mm -hmm. at $1.57. They have to win at the MCG, the West Coast. So I'll go with the Coasters in that one, Swatter. I think it'll be close. Big game. Uh, St Kilda will push north, but north need to win. Boomer's game. Yep, well Milestone done. game will do. And Melbourne will be too strong for the Gold Coast. To it. Melbourne are playing some really good footy, as are the Gold Coast. All right, well done, Picks. Thanks for your contribution. That is the AFL Rising Star. Have a great weekend. Good luck to football and netball teams. And we'll be back same time next week. See you then.